Hey what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. In this video we are going to see all the basic components of Kubernetes so you can start working on Kubernetes and create the powerful applications. So let's get started. So the smallest unit of Kubernetes is a pod. So let's take an example of a Java application that is connected to MySQL database or MongoDB database or Redis database anything. So considering one Java application either a Spring Boot application or a normal Java application and a database. So we have two applications both of them are in a different containers so we can deploy both the containers into a individual pods. So we'll be creating a two pods one pod for the application and one pod for the database and we'll be deploying that two pods to our Kubernetes cluster. So that means our pod is the abstraction for our containers. So generally a one pod will contain the one application means one container. So on the creation of pod each pod will be getting its own IP addresses. So internally within the virtual network they both can be connected using their internal IP address that are created. So they will be connected using that internal IP address which is created. So suppose any issue happened and that pod is died and the new pod is created. So new IP address will be created for that particular pod. So in that case the configurations will be difficult now right because earlier you have already configured your application to work on that internal IP which was already there now the new pod is created so you have to configure again to work on that particular new IP address so in that case the other component service comes into picture service is a abstract layer for exposing the APIs so what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a services for the pods that we have created both the service and the pods have its own different life cycle so whenever a pod is destroyed service will remain intact so whenever there is a new pods created based on the scalability or based on the availability of the configuration all will be connected to that particular service and our multiple applications will be connected via that service which has been exposed not the IP address. So the configuration will be taken care using the service endpoints that we created. So that will solve the issue that we had earlier using the IP address. So now services can be internal service or the external service. So suppose your application can be accessed from outside your Kubernetes cluster. So for that you will be creating your external service and for your database you will be creating your internal service because from the outside you should not be allowed to access your database. Your application can directly access your database from the internal service that you have created. So when you create the external service, that external service will be having the IP address and the port details. But that is not the way you want to share your applications to the users. You want a particular DNS name or a domain name that you want to share. So how it can be handled when a user tries to hit that particular domain name or a DNS name, then from that domain name, your IP address has been resolved and it will be called your application. So in that case, ingress component comes into picture. So what you will be doing, you will be creating one ingress component for your service. So it will resolve your request. So whenever a request is coming to that particular ingress using a domain name or a DNS name, it will resolve that to your internal application deployed to your Kubernetes cluster. So there will be one extra layer on top of your service that is your ingress and all of our services are our load balanced as well. So if you have multiple pods deployed to your Kubernetes cluster and all those ports are connected to a single service, so that service is a load balance so that it will internally decide to which application that request has to be passed and internally it will resolve the requests. So suppose we have our application and we have have our database both in their individual pods and if we change our database so entire configuration is being changed so our application has to now connect to the new database that we have created to connect to so typically we have created all those configuration like our application should be connected to this database inside our application properties file so to change those properties file we have to again rebuild our application we have to again deploy our applications all our pods into our cluster so that's a very tedious process. So what we can do is we can use the another Kubernetes component that is config map. All our connection details, all our external configuration we can create in a config map and we can connect that config map to our application so that whenever there is a change in the configuration we just have to change in the config map and Kubernetes will take care of everything and all our application will work consistently. So this way we can introduce the config map in our cluster as well. So there will be a scenarios like you have to store your credentials, you have to store your password in your application. So to store all those password in a config map in a plain text is not feasible. That's a security risk as well. So to store all of these things there is another component in Kubernetes that is secrets. So secrets will be storing all your credentials, all your 
data in a base 64 encoded format so you can store all your credentials all your private informations that no one should access to in these secrets and you can deploy that secrets into your kubernetes clusters now we saw that whenever there is an issue in the pods that pod is destroyed and the new pod is created right so consider if there is an issue in your database pod and that database pod is destroyed and the new database pod is created so all your data has been destroyed all your data has been deleted but that's not what you want right you have to store your data and whenever new pod is created that new pod should be having all those data that earlier it was having so to achieve that we have another component that is volumes so you can use kubernetes volumes to store all those persistent data so suppose all your database all your mongodb database all your file systems for all of that you can create the volumes and you can attach those volumes to your Kubernetes components. What is a volume? Volumes are nothing but your external storage, your hard drives or any of the storage provided by your local, provided by your on-premise, provided by your cloud provider. So in that volumes also there are two types. Either you can create a volumes locally inside a Kubernetes cluster or you can create a remote volume to any of the cloud provider. You can attach those storage to your Kubernetes cluster. So now by any chance consider that your pod is destroyed, your main application pod is destroyed and new pod has been created so it will take some time to create a new pod and meanwhile any user is trying to access that application they won't be able to access that application so the purpose of high availability and high scalability is not yet achieved so to achieve that high availability like whenever a pod is destroyed and a new pod is created you should be having a replica of it right so what you can do is you can create the entire replica of your application like the pods the services the database pods and everything and you can replicate all of those things right and you can connect all those replicas to your services as the services are load balanced so to make the replicas of your application deployments comes into picture so deployment is the another kubernetes component that is the abstraction for your entire applications so like pod is the abstraction for your containers and deployment is the abstraction for your entire applications like you'll be having different parts different services ingress and everything so entire thing can be abstract in a single deployment and in that deployment you can specify the replication factors like how many replicas you want to create how you want to upscale how you want to downscale your applications and all those informations you can define in your deployments now if you're using deployments for your application that is fine that it will be creating your multiple instances for it and all of those instances are created or connected using the services but what about database if you're creating database using the deployments then multiple instances of the database will be created and the synchronizations won't be happening so there will be a duplication of data as well in your database so you don't want your databases or your stateful apps to be running using the deployments so to do that there is a different component there is another component that is stateful set so stateful set is more used when you are working with databases or the data that has to be synchronized across all your replicas but to set a stateful set is a more complex and more tedious task than to do a deployment so mostly what has been preferred or what i can suggest you is you can do deployments for your stateless application like for all your application you can do deployment and you can do replicas and everything on that but for your databases and your persistent storage i suggest you to do the externalizations create the database separately from your kubernetes cluster so it is easy to maintain and easy to connect all your applications so that's it these are all the basic components of kubernetes architecture so if you know all these components and you know how to work with these components then you can create a pretty powerful applications out of it so if you like this video give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos till then happy coding see you